Wholesale to Million family, happy Monday. We're back with subscriber first wholesale deal interview. I got Jay on today. He closed his first wholesale deal back in October. Um, so the total amount is 7000 but it's a JV deal. So he profited about three k on this deal. All right, you guys, I'm going to bring him on to share with you guys his stories, his first wholesale deal, how he got it done. And the reason for me to do this, you guys, is to let you guys know, for those of you who are struggling, trying to get your first wholesale deal done, is letting you know that there are people out there, average, normal people like us. You know, we are out there doing deals. So giving you that faith and that belief and that courage to keep on going, that you too can do this. And it's not just this, it's not business, it's just for any guru or anybody special that you too can make this happen. If you have the will and take massive actions, implement what you learn, and just go out there and crush and get it done. So you guys, put your hand together and help me welcome Jay from Chicago, Illinois. What up, buddy? What's going on, Kai? How you doing? I, what, yeah, man. Happy Monday, dude. Hope you had a great weekend, bro. I had a great, had a great weekend. Had a great weekend. The weather is actually good for the wintertime up here. Awesome, awesome. And also, too, so you guys, um, Jay's from Chicago, Illinois. Um, he went on after that in November, did another like two, three deals. Is that correct? After that? Yes. Two more in November. Had a good November. Yep. Nice man. And, Killing it. Um, yeah. and also to you guys, if you do enjoy this interview and if you have, if you, um, if you got any, um, if you got any nuggets out of this, right. If you got any nuggets out of this, don't be shy, smash the thumbs up, show or get some love. Also, too, if you recently closed your first wholesale deal, drop me your email. Email me at, um, the link will be in the, uh, the description, but email me at wholesale2millions at gmail.com and would love to get you on to the channel to share your story and your first wholesale deal. And also, too, is please um, like, comment, and share this video. Let's get more people onto the family. So Jay, let's re jump right into it, man, and share with everybody. I want to know your story, man. Like, like, like where where you were, and how did you merge into wholesaling, and then lead into your first wholesale deal? Well, actually, uh, real estate investing. I started maybe about uh, what twelve, thirteen years ago. Um, got a couple of uh, rentals, um, um, buy and hold. Uh, you know. Then the market crashed, of course, in, uh, what, 07, 08. Mm -hmm. um, so I took a, a hit then. Um, and I'm a former, I, actually, I'm a former uh, teacher, um, public school teacher. So, um, um, and I've delved off into a couple of other businesses. Um, but wholesaling was something that I was already um, uh, interested in. Matter of fact, the first time I ever saw it, um, about, uh, let's say, 2005 or six or something like that, I was... Uh, at a closing and then we were actually buying a property from for, from someone else um and come to find out that it was an assignment something i didn't even know what that was uh but there was an eleven thousand dollar fee that the other wholesaler picked up so it always piqued my interest um but i just didn't know how to do it um and that was you know years ago so um but i had a couple of uh, uh rental properties um and then it just maybe the last couple of years uh uh, the wholesaling um, idea kind of picked back up and um, I kind of just went full steam and studying, watching guys like you, uh, the flip man, um, uh, Max, you know, so, um, and I, and I learned a lot and I was able to close uh, uh, the first official wholesale deal back in um, October, Sept late, late September, uh, early October, something like that. Yep. So, um, and I, and I see the light now. I see the light. Yep. I see the light, you know. Then in November, we closed uh, two more or uh, closed two more. And we have a couple of more um, scheduled for um, close out this week as well. So, yep. Nice, man. It's been nice. A ride so far. Awesome, man. Hey, Jay, I want to say congrats, bro. So you, so, you got into, so, so, so you got into real estate when? Like back in 05? Yeah, uh, the mid-2000s, 05s, uh, took out a few loans. Okay. Um, yeah, we, we had, a, uh, let's say at the time, maybe five or six rentals. So I kind of did it the, in, the, I guess, the opposite way. Um, I still actually have a, a, a rental um, um, as well uh, that I bought back then. But the rest of them I lost when the market crashed. Um, but right now, you know, um, I've learned other methods of how to, uh, you know, acquire properties. And, and the wholesaling um, 
with this, you know, it's kind of amazing because I guess with the marketing and um, the types of leads that we're getting, you know, I'm saying, okay, I can pick up this property right here. And if I want to close on it myself, I can. And I got it at a good price without having to go get a bank loan. Or if I did have to get a loan, it wouldn't be um, something um, that I'm overpaying for. So I, I've learned how to find properties that are uh, deeply discounted prices, you know, so that I can either assign to other investors that may want to go and do a full rehab or, you know, down the line, I can pick up a couple more myself. Very nice, man. So Jay, so back, so back in the mid 2000s, you got into real estate to ask and you were just buying and being a landlord. So you buying and hold, you're doing a buy and hold. Right. And, buy and hold. Right. Gotcha. And, hold. and how many did you have at that time? Uh, Before at, the crash. At that time, uh, we had about uh, nine. Okay. We had nine. Yep, nine, nine units, and then, and then, and then after the crash, how many did, how many did you have to let go, and how many did you are able to keep? Well, uh, when the market started tanking, we were able to sell a couple of them uh, to keep uh, two of them. Gotcha. Um, which was a couple of multi-units. Nice man. So right, so right now, so right now, you still have uh, two units that you're holding, or uh, two rentals. Right, two rentals. Right, right gotcha. One multi-unit apartment building, and uh, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Hey, you guys. Um, if you guys hear that little, like in between, it seems like we have a little short disconnection there. I apologize for that. Um, yeah. So Jay, let me ask you this, man, because. A lot of times, you know, you guys, it's really all comes down to mindset. And when you were going through that, Jay, what, I guess, what drives you to keep on going? Because some people want, you know, I don't know if you have to, I don't know if you're able to sell some of these unit or were you, um, or did you lose anything in that 2008 where the market crashed? And how do you pick yourself up? I guess that's, that's the questions. I, I lost it all uh, for, the, for the most part. Yeah, Jay, we're having some uh, some internet connections, bro. Sorry about that. Uh, it, it, it was very rough. Uh, um, I was I was actually working at the time, so you know my job. Uh, um, um, you know, so I did have the strategy was to um, um, you know resign or quit. So I couldn't quit right away took me a few more years after that. Um, but, you know, it was a rough ride, you know. And um, so I actually, I, during that time to keep me up, I, you know, I've read some um, some great books, uh, listened to. Oh, man. I watched other guys who had. Um, gone. Yep. I can hear you. Okay. I watched. Um, um, other guys who had uh, YouTube shows such as yours. And, you know, I, I never stopped paying attention. Um, but then um, a couple of years ago, um, 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 I guess I saw the Max Maxwell doing it. Then I started watching you because um, you're kind of new. Um, I always watched uh, the Flip Man, you know, so a combination of those three and the Sean Terry's and all of those. I said, okay, let me, let me jump in. Then also you, you have great, um, interviews such as this. So when you bring on um, guests and it's their first deal or their second deal, you know, that kind of inspired me as well. Awesome, man. Awesome, Jay. So, and so basically you got into wholesaling because you uh, went to the auctions and, and someone sold a deal to you and made like 11 K. Is that what you said? Yes. Yes. Actually um, this is back in 2005. Now I saw an ad in the paper. And me and my father at the time, we went to take a look at the house. Um, and, you know, we, uh, we were going to pay for it. Uh, we were going to get, try to get a loan to uh, take it down. But actually, we didn't, we didn't see that the guy had advertised that it was a cash deal. Um, so he connected us with the hard money lender. Um, and we were able to close on it with that hard money lender. But I, one thing I noticed... Um, uh, I come to find out, I guess, through the whole process that he didn't own the property, um, which didn't matter to me because um, 
it was still a good deal. Um, and I also noticed uh, that he did a double closing as well. Um, he didn't assign this one up, uh, but he did do a double closing. I kind of took a peek over on the HUD and I saw that this guy made $11,000. I'm like, wow, he didn't even own the property. He made $11,000. How did he do this? You know, um, so I think I went to Barnes and Noble at the time and picked up a book. Uh, I believe the book was called How to Flip or something like that. Um, I can't remember exactly. But uh, and that was my um, eye opener to the world of uh, wholesaling. Back then, they were calling it uh, uh, flipping. Um, and then I kind of started notice the terminology kind of started changing to wholesaling real estate. Uh, but, you know, it's the same concept. So mm -hmm. but I never really jumped all the way in during that time uh, because I had a couple of rentals and we were doing a few minor, you know, uh, not major rehabs, but, um, uh, you know, back then the market was hot. So, but we were doing re, uh, renovations and, um, and it wasn't until maybe a couple of years ago that we kind of started entertaining the world of wholesale, um, less risk, um, you know, but it's a marketing business. So you do have to market to get the leads. Um, but I, I like this strategy because now I'm going to re-enter the market. Um, we're going to pick up some more rentals. Uh, um, over the next you know, first quarter of uh, 2019, but um, yeah, the wholesale and I, I have I've seen the light. Awesome, man! Awesome, dude, Jay. Now, my question: So, when did you actually? I know you 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 kind of uh, stumble on it back in 05 and and so, but so when did you initially got into wholesaling? Initially, let's say um, 2000. Hmm what's this, 2018? Beginning of 2017. Beginning okay. of 2017. Beginning so of 2000, let's say March, April, 2017. Okay. Now, within that time of 2000, because you just recently closed your first wholesale deal back in October, 2018. So I want to know, it's between that almost a year period of time there. Uh, yeah, almost a year there. What were you doing in that meantime, were you just doing researching or were you buying rentals? Like what were you doing? Because it took you a while to do your first wholesale deal. So I want to know. Well, actually, uh, a lot of researching, um, uh, over studying, doing, you know, uh, reading and following this guy and doing that. And I wasn't taking action like I should have. Um, but also I, I did get a couple of prop, a few properties under contract at that time. Um, uh, and I had a little apprehension when it came to talking to sellers as well. So sometimes I wouldn't, uh, there was a little hesitation. I might've not followed up like I should have. Um, I might, I've had deals where I've had other wholesalers, they will put contracts on the property, but I thought they were the end, end buyer. Um, so I've, I've lost a couple of deals like that because they didn't close my property. I had to learn, you know, um, um, how to talk to sellers and then also how to deal with other um, um, wholesalers and also how to identify, you know, real cash buyers, someone that's actually going to close on the property. So um, I was working, you know, with all of those things. And then, you know, when 2018 hit, I said, okay, well, let's go ahead and uh, take it up another notch and let me go ahead and, you know, return all the calls back that I need to return. Let's start taking action, you know, do my mailers, um, everything that I learned over the past few years, I just had to put it to use in regards to wholesale. And once I did that, then that's when things started getting a, a little better and I started seeing the light when we closed the first deal. Awesome, awesome. You guys sit back and hang tight because I'm going to ask Jay some questions that I don't ask some on my other interviews. So sit tight. All you guys' questions, I want to uh, go ahead and uh, eventually ask Jay kind of how did he verify his buyers, uh, what resources is he coming from, what action he took um, to really get it done. So Jay, let's jump into your first wholesale deal, man. How do you find, like, how do you find the seller? How do you find the buyers? Um, and then in between, how do you go from that locking deal up all the way to closing? First wholesale deal, um, single brick, single family home. Um, and they saw that it was from a bandit sign. Actually, it was from a bandit sign. Um, it was a, a older couple, maybe in their 60s. Um, and they just wanted to uh, actually down. In fact, um, 
property and they were moving in with their daughter. Um, so, and they pretty much had called us, um, another wholesaler had put a contract on her home, but he, he couldn't sell it. So I guess you saw one of our signs and we, um, we were actually able to close maybe three weeks later. Uh, but the house was a pretty solid house um, in, a, in, a, in a pretty decent neighborhood. And we were able to cash them out and they were able to uh, uh, move in with their daughter. But the house is pretty much just sitting empty. Um, and we, you know, we, we hooked up with the investor that was able to close us out. Got you, man. That lead came from a bandit sign. Okay. So uh, now, Jay, how many bandit sign did you put up, bro? Um, actually, we just put out 50 uh, yesterday. So we try to do at least uh, 25 to 50 a week. At least 25 to 50 a week. So you put out more, but I'm, but we've all, yeah, go ahead. No, 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 no. Which is not a lot. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Jay. So you put out about between 25 to 50 sign a week and that is Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. And how big, how big of a sign are you using? Um, what is that? Um, 18 by 24. 18 by 24. And what do you put on the sign? Um, Bob's buy houses. Bob's buy houses. Bob's That's buy, it. Bob, Bob's buy houses. Um, all cash, and then we have the, the phone number to call. That's it. That's Simple a, um, as that. A marketing company. Yeah. Bob's buy houses. Yeah. With gotcha. Cash. And the reason I ask all this question, you guys, because some of you guys are, are are just overthinking and saying, "Oh, I got I got to put this on the sign. I got to put this on the sign." So uh, for Jay, it's just straight up. I think it's nice and simple. Bob's buy houses cash. And then phone number. And uh, now, where do you put phone them? Number. Where do you put them? We try to put them off of, um, um, busy intersections, off ramps, um, you know, places where there's a lot of traffic, where people are going to stop, um, you know, at the red light or whatever. They're getting off the expressway. They look up, boom, and, you know, there's a sign right there. So, but you have to stay cons consistent um, because, you know, uh, you can't just put them out and then not put them out again because this is a you know during the election season sometimes they'll move the signs um, sometimes uh, other guys may take the signs down so you have to stay consistent you know so but you know that was that's where the first deal came from a sign gotcha, um, man. actually and it wasn't even in the neighborhood that um, the seller lived it was in another neighborhood across across town and she just happened to uh, write the number down or, may, or she may have taken the picture and she called me, you know, a few days later. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Nice man. So Jay, how long did you, so the, 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 the first day that you start putting up bandit sign, how long did it took for the, for this one lead to come in? Um, that sign may have been up for weeks, you know, that particular sign that she saw. Uh, but again, remember, um, when we first start, when I first started putting up signs, um, we did get calls come in, but I wasn't that great on following up with the calls. Uh, and, um, and sometimes I may have gotten houses under contract uh, uh, before I kind of had a, you know, a script that I was following. Uh, the price was maybe too high, so I couldn't sell it. Or there were times when I did get houses under contract at a good price. Um, another wholesaler or investor would, um, tie up the home and couldn't close on. So we did have deals to come through, but um, I just didn't have all the pieces together. So, but, um, you know, start following guys like you, uh, you know, when you kind of gave hints on how to, uh, you know, get the price down, um, Ty Taylor as well. And, you know, then, you know, watching guys like uh, Sean Terry, whatever, how to deal with cash buyers, you know, so I was able to, I was able to identify everything and we were able to take them down. But a large part of it, uh, which I didn't, which is why I didn't close a deal earlier, um, it was procrastination and just overanalyzing things. Um, I had the information, but I wasn't being active like I should have. So, you know, that, that, that's the main thing. You have to um, take action. You know, once you learn something, go out there and do it. You know, you don't have to read four or five different uh uh, going four or five different directions and you know because you'll be all over the place the, the key thing is to take action once you learn something that's that's the most important lesson
Agree, man. So for those of you who have that problem, if you have that problem where you overanalyze, you look into one thing, then you start reading 10, 20 books to, to get even deeper into it, want to know everything before you actually take the first step, sit back. Um, once I'm done with Jay here, we're going to try to make sure that you're able to go out there today and implement something, all right? Just something. Okay, so hold on a second. Now, Jay, what I, I guess what I want to know is the reason why I asked you is the first day that you put that, that, that sign, uh, that, bandit, that first bandit sign up, I want to know is obviously you get leads coming in, you get people calling you, but I want people to know that how long it took you consistently putting out sign, put them up Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, take them down, right? And then put it back on again, right? Uh, no, we actually, um, we don't take them down. Oh. We don't take them down. Um, yeah, we don't, we don't take them down. Now, if we have the stakes, sometimes we'll go back and we'll, 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 um, um, take the stakes up because those disappear as well. Um, but some of the signs we'll, we'll leave up. But I will say um, maybe a couple of months when we first put them up that we started getting a lot of calls. Um, but then we started diversifying a little bit. So we do mailers, you know, we pull certain, uh, uh, let's say absentee owner, the list for that. Um, and we've been getting um, leads from that as well. So uh, and we're, we're getting into uh, um, other types of lists to pull as well. So, uh, and which is where the other two deals came from, uh, were from um, actually uh, mailers. So, you know, it's just interesting. You know, we get different types of leads depending on the type of marketing um, that we do. Nice, man. Nice. Okay. So, um, this seller here calls you and uh, this property is vacant. The property was vacant at the time? First property was vacant, yes. Okay. That was vacant. Gotcha. Okay. So, the property was yeah. vacant. And uh, now the seller calls you. Um, did you did you got a lock up on a contract over the phone, or did you went out to the property and meet up with the seller? I, so I kind of want to know how that works. Actually, we locked it up over the phone. We locked it up over the phone. Um, we were able to uh, um, because she was in a position. They were in a position where they were already. They already had one home. Um, that they were living in and they just moved all of their things out of their, uh, the home that we uh, put a contract on. So, and it was becoming a headache for, um, because now they had to manage two homes. Um, so, but we did lock it up over the phone. I think she was asking maybe for, uh, 50,000 or 60,000 or something like that. Um, and we got it under contract for 40, for 40,000. Nice man. And I now actually, we actually, I had to go back and renegotiate, um, and we got it down to uh, thirty-five. Okay, that's what that's what it's all for. Yeah, gotcha, man. So, um, Jay, did you ever do you ever saw the property? Excuse me. Do you ever saw the property? Did we sell it? No, like, uh, did you ever did, we, did did you ever went out and see the property? Oh uh, yes, you did. Okay. Yes. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. And what, and so you went out there and looked at the property. Um, you went out there and looked at the property. So you almost 50, 50, almost virtual. Cause you don't see, cause uh, you didn't get to see the seller. So now, um, do you have any background as far as, oh yeah, you bought rental property before. So you do have a little background in rehab costs. So you kind of went out there, look at the property and figure out how much the uh, rehab is on the property. Right. The rehab okay. uh, was about about fifty thousand. It would have needed about fifty thousand. Okay. After repair value was about one fifty. Nice man. Good. So the ARV you guys is one fifty. Rehab is fifty thousand. Now I wanna so explain roughly, just just briefly, Jay, how big the house is, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, square footage, and what what kind of rehab. So so name some of the rehab so that way people can get on ideas. Of if they were looking at the same house, they, they can kind of roughly have, know how to calculate uh, the repair cost, man. Uh, this home was about 1,000 square feet. Um, it was actually a two bedroom, um, two bedroom, uh, one and a half bath. Um, and there was room to possibly maybe add a third bedroom because a lot of homes up here, you know, um, everyone likes three bedrooms. 
So uh, we had different cash buyers who came by. Uh, some even wanted to add an addition possibly, uh, you know, to the home, maybe for that third bedroom. Um, there was one big bedroom that could be maybe converted to two bedrooms where you can get your three bedrooms. And there was also room on the lower level of the basement um, where you possibly could put another room as well. So, uh, you know, we were looking at, you know, um, now if to get it to maybe rental condition, it, it depends on the buyer, maybe rental condition, it may have maybe needed another 20, 20,000, but, uh, but a full gut rehab uh, where you're going to do a new kitchen, a new bathroom um, and all of that. Um, and, and, and finish the basement, you know, it's going it to, it would have needed a good 50, you know, and this is the, some of the feedback we were also getting from um, some of the buyers that we showed the house to. Gotcha, so, man. Uh, you know, we had a number, we had a number in our head, but we got feedback from, from some of the, uh, the, 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 the initial people that came out to see the home. Nice. Nice. Part. Okay. So now here's my question for you for the rehab cost. So it pretty much, it seems like this property needs complete rehab. New windows, paint, flooring, kitchen, bathrooms, new, roof, 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 roof electrical is actually plumbing. Solid. Yeah. Okay. So the only uh, good thing is that the foundation plumbing, is solid. Yeah. Foundation was solid. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Right. So this property needs it, a complete it, it, rehab. To to put back on the market and uh, for uh, yeah to put back on the market yeah. Um, gotcha. Like that. Now, now it, it it was livable, but it you know to put back on the market to to, to put all the bells and whistles in it, it would have needed about fifty. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. So basically, yeah. the buyers that's going to buy this and in, their intention is to flip it, then they need to put in fifty thousand because this property needs a complete rehab. And Jay said that if they were to send it out as a rental, if they were to fix it up and keep it as a rental, it probably needs around twenty thousand. Now, my question, now my question for you, Jay, is that is the buyer planning to add another bedroom so it turned into a three one and a half to get the ARV of 150 or the two one or the two bedroom one and a half bath was the ARV of, of 150? No, the two, if they would have, uh, the two, the two bedroom um, and one and a half bath, if they were to keep it like that, then they probably would have been able to get about because there was a home right around the corner that just sold uh, for like one thirty-five. Mm. If they wanted to get that higher ARV, um, it would have been maybe about one fifty. They, but they would have had to add another bedroom. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, great, man. And the thing is, the reason why I asked this question, you guys, is because a lot of times what it is is that a lot of times you might have under contract a potential deal, but you don't know. Because the end, like at the two bedroom, one and a half bath for the amount that you get a lock up on the contract and the buyers goes in there and they can only flip a two bedroom, one and a half bath for 135 or 130. But the buyer looked at it like, hey, I can add another bedroom, turn it into a three bedroom. Now they increase from 130 ARV to a potential 150. Is that correct, Jay? Correct. And a lot of times is yep. that every buyer look at a deal differently, all right, and based on their experience. And that's why a lot of times they can make a deal that can't work for a two bedroom, one bath, but they can still make it because they were able to turn it into a three bedroom. Hopefully you guys will be able to understand that. So Jay, how long did you lock, now how long did you lock uh, the deal under contract for? Uh, for uh, 45 days. 45 days? 45 days. Okay. Now, did you put, uh, and how much was the earnest money? Uh, we put on the contract $100. Did, uh, now, did the, seller, did the seller ever ask you? Sell, seller never asked for the earnest money. Never gotcha. asked for the earnest money. Gotcha. Nope. Um, so, 45 days, and how long did it take you to find your buyers? About 30. Uh, well, I'll say from the time we got it under contract until we closed, it took about 30 days. Okay. It might have taken about um, uh, maybe two weeks to find the buyer. About gotcha. two weeks to find the buyer. Okay. Two weeks initial from the date you found the, you found the buyers. And uh, where did you find the buyer? 
um, initially uh, we had a couple of guys that wanted to uh, tie up the property, but they didn't want to put their earnest money down. So, you know, um, and then I reached out to a partner um, who I've known, and she actually brought the buyer to the table. And he was able to, and he gave us the earnest money on the spot. I met him at the house. He had a check in his hand. He put the earnest money check in my hand, the cashier's check, and we took it to the title company. Nice man. So where did you? So where did you meet your partner that you JV JV with? Is it somebody you know personally, or somebody you know like uh, virtually? Um, how do we meet? It's mm, a good question. Um, we may have. Uh, may, uh, it was a property, I believe, I was advertising um, from a previous deal. So probably an ad on Craigslist or something, and she called the number because um, she may have had a buyer for that one, and that's how we connected. Um, yeah, or could I believe it? Yeah, it was an ad. It was uh, Craigslist. That's how we met. Gotcha. Yeah. And the, the reason you guys, I'm asking Jay all these questions so you guys can can understand that where are all these buyers coming from? JV deal, where's all these buyers, or uh, you know, where's all these partner coming from? So this partner, Jay doesn't have, doesn't know personally, he put an ad on Craigslist, connect with her. It seems like she worked with all the wholesaler, which means like she comes in, she has a cash buyer list and she calls wholesale. And that's how they connected was he put an ad and she found him on Craigslist. Um, okay, so how many buyers do you have to go through until you found this one buyer? Uh, for this particular property, about um, maybe four, three or four. Okay, four buyers that you have to go through. I know the property is vacant, so how did you get? So how did you get access to the property? Well, actually, this particular property, uh, she did not want to give us a key, and she didn't want to put a lockbox on the property. So uh, there was a previous wholesaler, um, I guess, that gave her. He was very, very aggressive, so and he really didn't have a good rapport with her, so she was upset, and so she told us from from the beginning, um, you know, I'm not gonna put a lockbox on here. Um, are you guys are you guys gonna really buy this property? She was just frustrated at that point, so you know we said, hey, um, um, uh, look, look, we're in full cooperation with you. Um, we're gonna work with you, and we'll give you a heads up. We just have to, uh, you know. We have a couple other partners we need to uh, actually show the home. Um, and we want to, you know, get a couple of estimates for some of our contractors. So, you know, but we're going to do our best to close you out, you know, in the time frame that we agreed on. And, you know, I built it. We, we had to build a rapport with her. Um, I got to, you know, know her husband, um, her daughter. So as, you know, as a few, as the days went on, she was very cooperative. And, you know, those few times that we were out there, um, she had a few items that she was still cleaning out of the out of the home, so we just kind of scheduled times around those times that she was going to be there anyway. But um, you know, she was happy in the end, you know, that everything worked out. So we yeah. were able to, you know, s satisfy her and her family. Very nice, very nice. Yeah. You guys, you guys really, really gotta listen up. All right, I'm asking Jay all this question. You guys gotta really listen up because if you run into a similar situation, well, if the a seller doesn't put a lockbox, wanted me to put a lockbox, if they, you know, and they want to be there, pretty much she wants to be there because she already had a bad taste um, before with previously. And that's how Jay handled it. All right, you guys. Um, so what, let me tell you, okay. saying so how much of a, a non-refundable deposit do you made uh, the buyer drop off? Uh, the buyer is a uh, 2000. Okay. It's 2000. $2,000. Mm -hmm. Great, man. And it closed. So 30 days closing, um, 30 day closing, seven K split it in half with, uh, your partner, right? Correct. Correct. Yep. It's good, 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 uh, first, first good payday for me. That was pretty good. Awesome, man. I was happy. Yeah. Cool, man. Hey, Jay, I want to say congrats, dude. Now, for those of you, if you have any other questions where I didn't ask, drop it in a comment and let us know, uh, and we'll be more than happy to answer any question you guys have. Um, so let me see here. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. I don't know if I missed anything else. So, Jay, do you now, for those that wants to, um, for those that wants to connect with you, man, and 
could you share with everybody? Like if those who want to connect with you, they want to know what title company or what attorney are you using or do you willing to share that, et cetera? Sure. Sure. If you want to connect, um, you can go to our uh, Instagram, um, Real Estate Solutions with the S, 360. Um, or you can um, also on Facebook, Real Estate Solutions, 360. Um, and Or you can email me, uh, jc at realestatesolutions360.com. That's the letter J, the letter C, at Real Estate Solutions with S, 360.com. Gotcha. And I'll, you know, be more, uh, if you're in this area, uh, reach out to me, um, or, you know, I'll be willing to, you know, help out with you, uh, you know, if you have any questions or, you know, if you need a little assistance on how to, you know, get your first deal closed, or if you have deals, maybe we can connect, um, and we can, you know, do business. Awesome. Awesome, man. Dude, that's why I love bringing on. And the thing is, you guys, the bigger the family, the channel grow, the more opportunity it is for you guys, because there's people probably in your area that you can connect with, network with and work and, and, and really help each other out closing deals and maybe help you close your first wholesale deal. Um, I'll make sure I drop all of, um, J contact information in the description so you guys can connect with him. Now let's talk about, um, where so you mentioned that the other two deals that you just closed in November, Jay, came from uh, direct mail. So were you sending out letters or postcard? And what list did you pull? Postcards. Okay. Um, actually, sorry. One of the one of those came from a sign as well, and the other one came from a postcard. Okay. And and what list do you target? Um, uh, absentee owner absentee owner um, list. Is, is that the only one uh, that you're sending out, absentee owner? So far. Well, we're, we're, we're getting into um, other lists that we're going to start uh, targeting. But so far, yeah, the absentee owner, owner list. Nice, man. And how long, how long have you been sending out a postcard and how much per month? Again, uh, again Khan, I ha we haven't been that consistent. Um, but we're, we're picking up our consistency because when we see that we are uh, consistent, you know, we get consistent, more consistent results. Um, so, you know, it's all making sense now. Um, but we, we were doing mailers, um, you know, with the letter in the envelope, but it's actually a little less, it's cheaper when we just do the postcards. Mm -hmm. Um, one deal that we're closing on, um, next week, we've, uh, it was to an absentee owner, um, and she lives in Florida, but she has a house here in Chicago, and she's having health problems, so she really needs. To, and she's about to lose. She she's she was scheduled to lose the home uh, for taxes, so you know we were able to work out some things for her to help her out. And what I'm finding in these different scenarios that uh, sometimes people are going through, you know, they they're having issues, you know, health problems, or um, the first deal we closed, we didn't know that the husband had cancer. So, you know, um, you know, and it's, it's kind of good that we were able to help out that family. Um, this, this elderly lady who lives in Florida, you know, we're going to be able to help her, her out as well. So, you know, um, that's a good feeling, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, there was absentee owner. So she has a vacant house sitting up here in Chicago and she's all the way in Florida and she, you know, it's become, it's become a burden for her. So we're going to be able to help her out. Um, help out someone who wants to find a good rehab, you know, and you know, everyone wins. So it's yep. win, win, win. Absolutely, man. I agree. So uh, the one that you got from a co postcard, uh, how much, it, how much did you made off of that one? Uh, that one, um, uh, uh 7,000. Nice, bro. That one was 7,000. Gotcha. Yeah. Nice. So, okay. So now how, 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 I guess how much are you guys planning to spend a month on uh, direct mail, like postcard per month? Uh, it's a good question, Con. Um, we're starting off the beginning of uh, 20, um, 2019. We're going to shoot for at least maybe at least 1500 to 2000 a month. Per month? You know, on, uh, like gotcha, yeah. okay. So fifteen yeah. to right. two thousand on the postcard per month. Great man. 
Um, hmm. So let me see what other, um, okay. Now the next thing is what are some source that you are, what are some source that you're collecting up your cash buyer? Um, auctions, you know, going to auctions. Um, because if you're, if you, you know, if they're at the auction and they're bidding on properties, you know, there's a certain time frame that they have to close. So, you know, though that's a direct source. Um, you can t uh, talk to realtors um, that may have um, um, investors that, you know, talk to some of your, your realtors to see if they have any cash buyers. Um, um, ads on Craigslist, you know, sometimes, you know, if you have a house for sale uh, or even if you don't have a home for sale, you know, you can, you, can, you know, a lot of people say you shouldn't put um, ghost ads up, but, you know, those work because you're going to get buyers to call. Uh, you're going to get a lot of wholesalers to call as well. So you have to filter, um, you know, through the other wholesalers, you know. Um, but other wholesalers are good resources because they may have buyers such as the case with the first property that we're able to move. So, um, so those are some good places that you can, um, you know, locate cash buyers as well. Certain yeah. Facebook groups, you know, excuse me, if you're in a good Facebook group, um, um, yeah. So nice. Those are Jay, places as well. yep. Jay, I, I want to know is, I want to know is maybe, you, maybe you have already told me, but I want to confirm. So this, so all of these that you named to me are the lease source that you're getting your buyer from, right? It's not something you'll hear, but something you actually do, right? Correct. Right. Okay. So you go to auctions, you talk to the realtor popping out on Craigslist and uh, what, what's the good Facebook group? that you're in that you are collecting your uh cash buyer from um i haven't really um uh, found any official cash buyers yet from facebook groups but you know um i would say in your, in your local market you know like for example you just may want to go do a facebook search um um, um and, and um, real estate investors chicago or real estate investors texas or whatever and all types of Facebook group, group, group books will pop up. Um, it's in your area. And, you know, after you join them, you know, you will be able to tell after a while, you know, who's the real players. Um, you know, so, but there, there are a lot of Facebook groups out there, um, you know, that have a lot of value in them. Um, and it's a way you can network with other uh, wholesalers and other investors. And you can just kind of get a feel for your local market. Awesome, man. Um, here in Chicago. Yeah. But I'm awesome. a part of a couple of Facebook groups. Con, Con I got to get you course so I can, I, can, I can jump in yours as well. I'm going to get you course soon. Yeah, 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 man. So yeah. You, you guys, first, Jay, I want to say thank you, man, so, so much for being open and sharing all this. And you guys, I'm really trying to dissect Jay here because I'm starting to learn from my previous interview, right? And then trying to get better and better and trying to think, hey, Con, when I first started, what kind of questions do I need to know? So I'm really trying to really dissect this interview with Jay and, and Jay is open enough to kind of share with you guys kind of almost everything, um, you know, and things like that. Now, the, ne the next one, Jay, is how do you qualify your cash buyer? Because we know that when you put ad on Craigslist or other source that you get l uh, some or could be a lot of tire kickers. So you, how, do you, how do you, now how do you, not something you, you, you hear, but how do you qualify your cash buyer? Um, I've done it several ways. Uh, you know, I've asked for proof of funds. Um, but the main thing I always ask them is how fast can they close? You know, so if they tell me they can close as soon as title is clear, you know, that's a good, that's a good indicator. Um, but the, the, you know, the, the best way is for them to put up their non-refundable earnest money uh, deposit or their non-refundable deposit. But that shows that they're serious, um, that, that they're not a tire kick. Um, so, but, you know, so, um, but other than proof of funds, you know, we, we like, we like to ask them to proof up proof of funds and then a non-refundable um, earnest money deposit. And then sometimes I will even ask them, I will go a little further if I'm just meeting them to see, uh, um, you know, do, have they uh, had any uh, recent projects they've worked on or other rehabs 
um, so I can kind of get an idea of the type of properties that they're looking for. And they'll say, you know, they'll give me an address of some of their other rehab projects or they may show me pictures and things like that. So, you know, and if they've done other projects recently, um, you can pretty much tell they're, they're the real deal. Awesome, man. Awesome, man. Jay, I'm about to tell you something, dude, that might going to change the course of your wholesaling. So when you, when, when you okay. finally get the package and jump onto my private Facebook group, dude, um, drop a post, tag me, because we went to the masterminding, and there's one guy in there. Um, so right now, you know, and I want to be transparent with you guys. So right now, I'm trying to work out how everybody could be a win-win-win. Now, these guys, you guys, they are freaking power, crusher, house player. So they're not buying a couple hundreds. I mean, this guy have bought over, they have done over 7,000 transactions already. And they buy hundreds and hundreds of home in one year. And wow. the two, and right now, this, this guy that I connect with in the mastermind, they are buying in. So basically, they don't buy. They're the lender that has connection to cash buyer. And one of them is, and one of the area that they service is Chicago, Illinois, bro. And the other one is Florida. Okay. So, um, and this one, you guys, I really try to, so my private Facebook group, because you guys pay for it, I really try and add as much value as possible. And I'm going to drop their contact information, but I'm going to be transparent with you guys is how I make money and how you win and how they win. Okay. Is Jay have a deal. He sends it to them. These lenders, they will connect you with, like they won't connect you with their buyers. They, so they're going to do the whole transaction so you don't have access to their buyer, right? Because they want to keep their buyer private. But how they win is that they're not going to charge you a fee. So it's not like a JV deal, Jay. So, they, so it's not like a JV deal where, you, where you're going to make 10000 and then you have to pay them like X amount of dollar. They get nothing from your deal. The reason why they do it is how they win is because they make money on lending their money at 12 or 15% or whatever it is to these fix and flipper, the cash buyer that they have on their list. And how Jay win, it's Jay got a, a buyer where all of his deal, he can send it over to them. And they said that they will help you analyze and let you know that what they would pay for it, instead of just saying no, they will tell you what they would pay for it or what the cash buyer would pay for it. So you can go back and renegotiate with the seller right away. Um, and, uh, and they will let you know like what numbers, right? Not just saying no, but at least tell you what number they would buy it at so you know. Because some buyer was just like, oh, they're not giving you a number, so you don't know what to do. If you go, go down you know, back and renegotiate or not, uh, how I'm going to win is I'm going to work out a deal with them when I send over people, you know, like Jay or whoever it is to them, what am I getting? So they're going to, so it's not coming out of Jay or it's not coming out from you guys, but it's going to come out from them of what fee that they're going to, uh, what fee that they're going to, uh, that, that they're going to pay me. So it's worth it for me to send them client. So a lot of times, like, okay. you know, so people ask, so Kong, what is in it for you? That's what in it for me, dude. Like, I'm not going to do it for free. Right. All right, you guys, there's never right. something for nothing in life. And let me tell you guys that, okay? So we're trying to work out. So what they are paying me, so how I'm going to send them, I'm going to continue sending them people like Jay to them. And then obviously that's how they're going to win is they going to, because I, I, I post that ad on, I post that ad. I'm already, I already shared two contact information already on the private Facebook group. Um, and I also want you guys to understand like I just, I just recently met these, these guy at the masterminding. I don't know them personally. All right. I met them and everybody in there, you guys are power player. Like you got to mix X amount. Your network have to be X amount. And it got to be verified for you to come into the masterminding. So I know that they actually do what they do that they say they do. But as far as in business wise, like how they are, I don't know. That's something you guys have to verify yourself. All right. So in business, there is a lot of sharks in there, you guys. So don't just say, oh yeah, this leads, you know, these piece, this person's coming from Kong. I trust them fully. So I'm just going to do that right. based on trust. And then you might get screwed and I don't want you to get screwed. So that's why I'm letting you guys know that, that I know that they do, they are doing what they say they do. You have to be the one that's going to verify and make sure that you're protected. Okay. Make sure that you get your money. Um, but dude, that is, that's it, man. Now, Jay, for those that are starting out, that are going at this and you, and it seems like it took you a while. Like me, it took me a while to get my, my first deal as well. What are some tips, action, most tips? I know we talked about the mindset already, but give some, give somebody an actionable step that they can take today, implement today, like right now 
and, and, and trying to get the wheel going, man. Steps to find a deal or, or what do you mean? Uh, yeah. Like, um, like an actionable step where they can go out there and, and start implementing and doing, and how do they get over that, uh, uh overanalyzed paralyzed thing? Okay. Um, you know, there, there's, um, well, let's start with you, you know, watching uh, others do it. Sometimes that's a motivating factor, you know, so watching you, um, your guests that you have on and you can, you know, um, you know, you have to fill your brain with things that are, are positive uh, that, 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 that you should focus on and, you know, set goals to achieve. So, um, and then, you know, from there, you know, it, it, it takes a life of its own, you know, um, you have to read books that are, um, that are about what you're doing, you know, watching YouTube videos, listening to podcasts, you know, um, minimize as much, you know, minimize the TV, minimize listening to the radio and watch things and fill your mind up with things that are going to help you get to the level, um, you know, so you can stay motivated um, because there are going to be some, some, uh, some humps in the road that you're going to have to get over sometimes. There are going to be some mental blocks sometimes, but as long as you, uh, you know, you stay motivated, um, you know, you'll learn, you'll figure it out. You're going to make mistakes. Um, I'm making, I'm, I'm still making mistakes. Um, but you know, you're going to, you're going to push through that and you know, there, there's light at the end of the tunnel. So, you know, um, and talking to people, you know, so, uh, go, go to RIA, uh, um, um, uh, RIA meetups, um, you know, get around like-minded people, um, that way that, that will encourage you and, you know, that way you can encourage them as well. Uh, you know, so, um, and just to get started now, you know, if you don't have a lot of money, you know, you can, um, call the for sale by owners, you know, on Zillow or Craigslist, um, you know, uh, Facebook marketplace, I believe they have listings, you know, just call, just call signs, call, call other, uh, call bandit signs. Um, you know, you can jump in and, and learn as you go, you know, you don't have to be like me and, you know take forever to do your first deal, you know, it might come quicker for you, you know, uh, but just the, the main thing is um, the two main things that uh, take action and be consistent, you know, those are those, you know, with, with taking action and being consistent, that'll get you a long way, you know, so, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Jay, I'm just curious, man, which package, which package were you planning to buy? Um, you know what? Maybe the script package. Why? Um, the script package. Just to, to tighten up a little bit. Um, but I, I, you have how many packages do you have? I didn't see. Maybe I didn't see the second. One. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I, I, for for you, is the uh, is the King Kong step by step. It's probably not for you. That's just that's just for those of you who's starting out. Who's like, hey Kong, I'm ready, man. 2019. I really want. Um, okay. I'm going to dedicate 2019 to learn this wholesaling houses business to get my first wholesale deal done. And that's a step-by-step. -step. So that's for like, you know, super beginners starting out, haven't done their, their deal yet. Or maybe you're starting to learn, but you're confused, you're lost. I really break it down for you and make it very simple. The other one is uh, beside the King Kong seller script package. The other one is my wife's super marketing blueprint where we share with you kind of like the whole blueprint of our system, all of the company we use, their name, their contact information. And so you can actually put a system together where we get our VA, um, how much we pay them, um, and, and, and just how to systemize your whole entire business. That's all. Okay. That's probably, the, that's most likely the one I'm going to get. That's the second one. Gotcha. Gotcha. The, and the, uh, the King Kong script, the King Kong set, gotcha. The King Kong seller script package is, it's just sharing with you guys how you, how you handle the phone call. Just like Jay said, um, Jay, was that, was that also one of your weakness, dude, was talking to seller? Yes. <laughs> yes, that was, that was, because I didn't know, you know, it's like, okay, man, what do I say? I'm going to get them on the phone. Um, you know, um, they're going to think I'm an idiot. Uh, yeah. They're going to hang up on me. They're going to beat up on me. So, you know, I just had, really, it was me putting all those things in my head. You know, you know, but then, you know, after you do it, um, you start to put two and two together, like, hold on, I, I know more about real estate than this homeowner, because most of the times, you know, there's going to be one, most people, they're only going to buy one or two houses in their lifetime. 
So here, you know, I may be talking to dozens of homeowners. So this, and the homeowner, they have the seller, they have um, frustrations too, because they just want to get their home sold. But uh, most of the time, you know, if you're, if you're a new person and you're, you're getting into this investing uh, world, the wholesaling side of things, you're, you're going to know more than a, than a, than a homeowner uh, because in, in regards to how to uh, sell their home, because uh, that's probably the only home they ever bought in their, ever bought in their life. You know, whereas you, the wholesaler, you're talking to dozens of homeowners, you know, so, um, you know, so you, once you get over that, you know, you get a good script. Um, you're not going to sound like, you know, you, you get a good script, even though you're not going to go maybe with your script word for word or but once you kind of understand the basic questions to ask, you know, then the conversations will flow um, a lot, a lot, a lot smoother. And you get over that, you know, you get over that, uh, over that hump right there. You know, but that was in the beginning, that was uh, something I had an issue with, um, you know, but now, you know, I, I love talking to sellers, you know, so it's not, it's not a problem now. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's, 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 it's work, you know? yeah. Jay, the, the reason why, the reason why I also point that out, man, you guys, if there's an internet connections, um, I don't know if it's on me or on Jay, but I think it might be on my end and I apologize, but the internet connection is kind of bad. Jay, you just froze, bro. Hello? But, uh, but, uh, uh, okay. I can hear you now. Awesome. So you, so the thing is you guys, the reason why I brought that up and asked Jay that, because that's also my biggest, biggest weakness. When I first started, I was taking massive actions. I was doing everything. I was calling everybody on Craigslist. I was getting a nose and scream and cussing and all of that, but I just push it through, push it through because I just focus on, Hey, you know what, Colin, what's more important is who cares. I need to get this deal. I need to get this deal. I need to get this deal because I need to change my life. So I was focused on more of the end goal, just getting in the deal, getting the deal and just, and, and everything else to me is just like, doesn't even matter. Um, but I was just having a terrible time talking to sellers. So it took me so long to get my first deal, like six months. And it wasn't even through a seller because I didn't know how to communicate, how to talk and to kind of let the seller know, Hey, what's the, what's the pro, uh, what's the pro of going with us and what's, what's, you know, what's, what's the con for not going with us and give them all the benefit of why they should and, and, and all that and how to negotiate. And, and I just didn't know what to say. All right, you guys, um, if I know how to talk to seller like I, like I am today, man, dude, I probably like to me, I like, I believe that I can go out there and probably get a, a deal under contract in 30 days. Cause I know that I went and took massive action. It's just that I didn't have the tools, uh, to back me up, uh, to really help me out. Um, for the, okay. Um, now for those of you, you guys, I want Jay, my story and Jay stories to be hopes and to be lights at the end of the tunnel. For those of you who are struggling, who are going through, like, I don't know what situations or, or, or what circumstances you're in, but I want our stories to be lights at the end of the tunnel for you. Some hope for you. If you lost belief because you were going through so many failure and you haven't really had success, so you don't have, so your confidence is just not there, and maybe your belief is not there, but I want our stories to be the faith and to be the belief, that believe in us, that you know what, if you have the work ethic, it's not a get rich quick, all right? For those of you who want to get rich quick, this is probably not the business for you, man, all right? Now, so I want you guys to see lights under, uh, 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 lights, um, and, and, and let you know that, you know, if you have the work ethic, if you have the drive and if you can just take massive actions and just implement, you know, maybe, 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 maybe you're not taking a big leap forward, but every single day, if you take one step at a time, you know, like, just like, um, it's like a journey of a thousand miles start with one step. Don't look up at the mountains because when you look up, it just seems like you're never going to get there. But if you put your head down and implement, just take one step at a time. You learn something. You got something, go implement it right away. We all, you, you guys, you got to understand this. No matter how much you learn, even if you have a mentor, no matter how much you learn, you are going to make mistakes. So who cares? Go out there, start making mistakes. The nice thing about wholesaling is that to me, if you do it right, if you have all the contract and if you have all the contract, even if you put a property up on a contract and the number is wrong, you have a way out where you're not going to lose anything. All you're losing is time because in your contract, it protects you as the potential buyer where if, you, if your number was wrong, 
you can go to the seller and say, hey, you know what? Uh, my partner didn't like the color of the house. Oh, the grass is too tall. Uh, the number just doesn't work. And then you'll be able to back out the deal scratch free and all you lose is, is your time. You get your earnest money back and all that. All right, you guys. So just take action. That is the key. You know, Jay, th that's the one thing that, 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 that he really pushed on is, is just take action. So if you got something from this video, you know, maybe it's too much for you. Pick one or two things that you want to take action within the next 30 days and just implement. And just like Jay said, it's all about staying consistent, you guys. It's not about the marketing channel. It's about the consistency in that marketing channel that you're doing. Now, let me give you guys an example. When I did the first probate and I got the guy that I like, because I talk about which company I used to, uh, to go with uh, for uh, the probate. So I have people calling into them and they say, Kong, you got to tell your audience, like they can't try it out for a month and expect it to work. Because after that, he, did, he, don't, he didn't see them order again. And to him, it's not about making that sales. I mean, making that sales great. But to him, he wants people to know it's not the first letter that you sent out. It's the, it's the consistently, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the tenth letter that you sent out. Right. So for me, right. I got my first probate deal was after, I think after like six months or so. All right, you guys. Then I got that probate deal. But that probate deal made me like 35 Gs. So it's really, you know, so it end up paying for like, you know, it and beyond. Um, so anyways, you guys, I want to say thank you so much, Jay, for coming on, dude. And congrats, bro. Um, I wish you massive success. Um, any last tips, any last word before we wrap this up, bro? Um, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. A uh, great channel. Um, uh, and, you know, any uh, new investors out there that that's looking to have a good uh 2019 just keep watching Khan's channel um and channels like it you know again but don't forget you know you have to take action to get something uh done you just can't keep watching videos so just you know the things that he's teaching you and others uh you know just implement them you know and um and you will you know you you will succeed you know um and if you're in the chicago area or if you're having uh problems uh moving your property just you know just give me a shout out um, you can email us, uh, JC at real estate solutions, three uh, com. You know, you know, we're, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Maybe we can all work together. All right. Awesome, appreciate man. It, uh, appreciate it. Con. Yeah. Hey, not a problem, man. Like, I, um, I'll make sure I'll put all of, uh, all of Jay, this, uh, in contact information you guys in the descriptions. And for those of you who starting out and who just discovered wholesaling, you guys, and you want to change your life in 2019, if you want to take your life this business to the next level and just crush it. And you don't know, like you're overwhelmed, you're overloaded with information. Like you don't know where to start, what to do. Then um, the first, so what I'm doing is that my pre, my, uh, my King Kong step-by-steps to how to virtually wholesale, whether you want to do virtually or you want to meet seller face-to-face, -face, it's completely the same steps. And I'm going to break it down and simplify for you actionable step where you can take it each and every single day, make it so simple on each single video that I hope that you'll be able to crush in 2019. Jay, thank you so much. For those of you who haven't followed me on Instagram, I don't know what you're waiting for, but I'll follow me on Instagram at Kong, K-H-A-N-G dot, like a period, a W-T-M. Jay, thank you, bro. I wish you massive success, bro. Thank you. Appreciate it, Kong. Have a good one. Thank hey, you. you too, bro.